Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you guys through kind of a day in the life of surviving the flu. So all four of my girls ended up having the flu and I'm going to show you our more of a holistic approach on treating kind of just the symptoms that come along with the flu. So stay tuned and let's get started. So the very first thing I'd like to talk about is the fever itself. This was our indicator that our kids were sick um, before we knew that they had the flu. And with a fever, we do not treat a fever until it gets pretty high. I don't want to list an actual number for you guys because I don't, this is kind of like a very um, questionable area and it's also something you have to be comfortable with. Um, so we, t we typically do not treat a fever um, right away. So I know a big concern with that for a lot of people is febrile seizures and I've done a lot of research for this and from what I've discovered is that febrile seizures typically will come on before you even realize that they have a fever. Anything over like 99.1 can go ahead and start be the onset of a febrile seizure. So typically you don't notice 99.1. So also with a febrile seizure, like 95% of febrile seizures, even repeating themselves, do not actually lead to epilepsy. So for me, the seizure itself, um, a febrile seizure is not a big concern for me. Like I said, take this for your own and do your own research. And I totally understand and respect everyone's judgment personally, but this is just something that is not a big concern to us because of the research that we have done. Most importantly, as long as the kids are staying hydrated and continuing to drink and they are relatively comfortable, we will be very hesitant to using any kind of fever reducers. But at any point, if we get nervous about the numbers being too high or if they're just not drinking or they're just miserable then we um, the first thing that I'll do is before actually trying a fever reducer I will use um, camphor oil this is the main in ingredient that's found in Vicks vapor rub and if I've found many a times if you just rub it on their chest and on their feet it typically will bring their fever down about one degree and so I'll let that go for about 30 minutes to an hour and then I'll go ahead and check them again and if it's continuing to go up then I'll use a fever reducer at that point. With that being said another thing when you are doing a more holistic um, care and you aren't using fever reducers I feel as though you do actually have to be a little bit more um, frequent in checking for their temperatures so I actually if they especially if it's over 100, 101 I will go ahead and check their fever every 30 minutes and I just want to look for those big spikes um, and just make sure that it's kind of staying consistent. A fever is very important, especially when you're fighting any kind of viral infection because that is your body's number one response in helping to kill that virus. Anything viral cannot be killed with antibiotics, so the only thing that you really have in combating that is your body's natural response of a fever. So the next most important part to treating the flu is hydration. This is probably the most important part especially if you have a child that is vomiting because they are losing so many liquids and with their fever being so high, you are going to want to make sure they are very, very hydrated. Being well hydrated also will help if they have a lot of mucus, which is very common as well with the flu. It'll help thin out that mucus so it's easier for, for your body to expel it. There are many ways to stay hydrated when um, fighting the flu. One of my favorites is echinacea tea. There's a lot of research showing that echinacea tea is a great immune builder which will help to shorten the length of the flu by up to 24 hours. So there's a few different ways that I'll serve echinacea tea. I will either just do hot tea if the kids have a really bad cough or, or I'll just reserve whatever's left over and put it in the fridge and they can do cold tea. I will add honey as a sweetener because honey has, especially um, a specific type of honey called Manuka honey, it has a lot of antiviral as well as anti-inflammatory benefits. So these are just little things that you can do in order to help um, shorten the length of that virus. You, I don't think that there's any kind of holistic treatment that you can do that will kill the virus altogether, but you will be able to help shorten the, the, length, the longevity of it as well as help um, with the symptoms. Another thing that I will make is kind of a electrolyte water. So I'll just take water, a little bit of lemon juice, a pinch of Himalayan sea salt, as well as, again, um, I'll add that honey for its antiviral and anti-inflammatory benefits. And I will also add, what else do I put? Ginger. Yes, ginger is a great anti-inflammatory too. So a lot of times when you have a lot of mucus and a lot of um, um, inflammation in your chest or sinuses, this will help with all of that as well. 
And smoothies, of course, because if a child is not very, they're kind of just groggy and they're not wanting to eat, you can still get those calories while hydrating them. Um, so the smoothie that I made today had papaya and mango and I added spinach for all the vitamin C that's in that. Smoothies are very, very beneficial because you can pack them full of these vitamin C rich fruits and even vegetables. Um, and this will help as well in aiding in um, killing that virus. The next way we like to combat the flu is through diet. Um, and with this one, it's a little bit less as important as hydration because your kid might not have an appetite. And if your child is not hungry, I don't recommend forcing food on them. Make sure that they're hydrated, but I don't really feel that it's necessary that they're getting these their normal caloric intake because while their body's breaking down that food, that requires energy. And the less energy or the more energy that they're using to break down food, the less energy that their body is actually using to fight that virus. So if they're hungry, awesome. If they're not, don't stress it. Just continue with dehydration. So some foods that I highly recommend when you do have the flu are um, bell peppers, oranges, grapefruit, strawberries, anything that's high in vitamin C and actually has a good um, liquid content to it. Fun fact here is I actually wrote the numbers down. Um, so bell peppers are actually have 142% of your daily value of vitamin C, whereas an orange has only 85%. So it's really crazy how we think of vitamin C and we immediately go to oranges, but actually bell peppers are higher in vitamin C. So just, just increasing your vitamin C intake as well as reducing the amount of extra fats and oils and you definitely want to remove anything dairy. Um, dairy will actually thicken the mucus um, so you definitely want to remove dairy and fats as well. Meat is also something that you should consider taking out of your diet while you are fighting the flu because it does require so much more um, energy in order for your body to break it down especially red meats because red meats will just kind of sit in your intestines and take forever for your body to break it down. Um, for a four ounce piece of steak, it actually will take, can take your body up to a week to actually fully digest that. Um, and you can just imagine how that doesn't actually help with the process that your body is going through with fighting that virus. The fourth thing that we kind of will do is supplements. Now, I'm not a huge fan of doing supplements because I think that you can get everything that you need from your food, but when your body is in a state of fighting a virus, it might need a little bit of a boost. Um, so a few things that I'm not going to go into like all the benefits of each, but a few things that we do like to do is maybe some vitamin C or some vitamin D. And when taking any kind of supplements, you want to make sure that you're getting them in a food state. So there's different types of calcium. Like if you just go to the grocery store and just go buy some calcium, it's probably not going to be an actual food derived calcium. And those really are not great for your you because your body can't break them down the right way and then it's they're really hard on your kidneys um so when you do go to find vitamin c or vitamin d as a supplement form you're going to want to go to like a health food store and make sure it's a plant sourced vitamin c or d as well as um collodial silver is really great at fi helping to fight viruses and elderberry syrup this is something that it's not just like take elderberry syrup and it's a cure-all. It can help shorten the length of your virus, but it's something that you kind of just build up. Um, so even when my kids aren't sick, I'll give them elderberry syrup daily. It's just very high in vitamin C and antioxidants, and these antioxidants will help fight this virus as well. So these are just a few supplements that we use, but essentially I try to put most of my focus on hydration and when they are hungry making sure they're eating clean and not eating foods that are going to limit their body's um, resources and energy output in order to help fight that virus. And my last tip to fighting the flu is one that I have already mentioned and that is vitamin D but our natural source of vitamin D is good old sunshine. So if your child has the flu or any kind of virus I highly recommend just taking them outside, especially if it's warm enough. Take them outside and just let them be out in the sunshine playing. Um, and this will give them a boost of vitamin D, but it, as well, all the fresh air and them actually just exerting themselves a little bit will help to break up that mucus and their noses will get to running. And um, it's honestly just a great thing. I don't recommend them doing it if they're not feel if they don't feel good enough to get up. Then their body needs the rest. But if they're up and playing and they're active. Um, and they're towards the end of it, then get them in the sunshine. Your child will really tell you what they need. Um, if they're a baby, it's a little bit trickier, 
But if they're just very lethargic, just let them rest. If they're wanting to be up and play and they're wanting to eat and they're wanting to drink, then let them do that. Don't limit them. Um, Just kind of vibe with them and let their body kind of tell you what they need. And yeah, so really there's no way to actually treat the flu itself. You're really just kind of treating the symptoms and you're trying to feed the good in your body. So um, taking away any kind of bad foods and increasing good foods as well as plenty of rest is really your only true way in fighting the flu. This week has just been crazy. Like I said, all four of the girls did end up with the flu. One of them had symptoms of vomiting One of, and the other three just had symptoms of um, chest congestion and sinus and high fever. So hopefully, like I said, next week will be more exciting and a lot less um, informational. <laughs> so remember that I am not a medical professional in any way. I highly admire and respect those who are, especially if they are willing to show you different treatment options and not only a one size fits all for all of your children. I love my pediatrician and they are really understanding of the fact that I have like done my own research um, and when I do approach them or my kids are sick and I ask them well can I do this Um, they'll tell me yes you can do this but if you see this sign then take them in Um, so really get comfortable with your pediatrician um, and if you're not feeling that connection just switch pediatricians (laughs) honestly it is not you need to find somebody that you can mesh with so that you guys are both working together in order to make the best decisions for your children Um, because sometimes there are a lot of pediatricians out there unfortunately who just think everything's like a one-size-fits-all and it's not and your child is important and you know what's best for your child you know if something isn't working you're the one that's with them all the time not the pediatrician so you need somebody that can respect your decisions as well we are all parents and we are all trying to make the best decisions for our kids so No judgment to those who do things differently and hopefully no judgment to me for not doing it like you. Um, We're all parents and we're, like I said, we're all just trying to have healthy, happy children. Um, So yeah, thanks again for watching and subscribe and I will be posting more holistic care as it comes. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any other questions about different types of holistic care. Thanks again.